Hello, I'm Svetlin Naku from SoftUni Global, and I'm here for the next episode from my Dev Concept series. In this episode, I will be talking about backend technologies. I'll review the concepts of backend and frontend and their role in programming. After that, I'll take a closer look at databases, relational and non-relational databases, and their role in backend development. We'll talk about object to relational mapping frameworks or the so-called ORMs, and I'll show you an important pattern for structuring backend apps, the MVC pattern, module view controller, how it works and why the programmers love it, how, what the model holds, what the view holds and what the controller uh, holds and what are their responsibilities. Then I'll explain the concept of APIs and web services along with the concepts of REST and the so-called RESTful APIs. And last but not least, we'll review the concept of virtualization, running uh, programs in virtual machines or containers and how to use Docker and how to run containers and container images in Docker. All these topics will be illustrated with short demos to understand them better and in a more practical way. Are you ready? Let's begin. The backend is the part of software systems which users don't see on their screen. The backend software runs in the server rooms of modern data centers and it is responsible for data storage, data processing and the business rules implemented in software. The backend is the server-side part of the applications where users and their data are stored and processed. The backend development is built around concepts, frameworks, libraries and tools for implementing business logic, data processing and data storage and exposing interfaces or APIs for the front-end. Now, let's review the most important principles and concepts from the backend development. Backend is the part of the software systems which users don't see on their screens. The backend provides concepts, frameworks, libraries and tools to build business logic, implement data processing and data storage and expose programming interfaces, APIs, for the front-end. The backend is the server-side part of the applications where users and their data are stored and processed. Let's review the most important principles and concepts from backend development. Backend technologies are the technologies, platforms and frameworks which run at the server-side part of software systems. The server-side software components implement logic and processing which are not related to the user interface. Backend technologies provide concepts, frameworks, libraries and tools to build business logic, implement data processing and data storage and expose programming interfaces, APIs, for the front-end. Let's look at some of these backend technologies. Data management technologies, databases and ORM frameworks such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, Antiframework and Hibernate. Backend web frameworks and MVC frameworks such as Spring MVC, Django, and ASP.NET MVC. RESTful uh, API frameworks, Reactive APIs, and other services and APIs such as ASP.NET Web API, Flask, RESTful, and RX Java. Microservices, containers, and cloud, cloud such as Docker images in Azure and Amazon. AWS. All these backend technologies are available with different programming languages such as C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Python, PHP, C, Go, Swift, and others. And development platforms such as .NET Core, Java E, Node.js, and others. Backend developers play an important role in the software development. They work on the server side of software systems. This is a popular profession in the software industry. Backend developers deal with the business logic, data processing, data storage, and service APIs. They use database servers, uh, 
backend platforms, application servers, containers, cloud environments, and many other backend technologies and tools. The backend components are often deployed as containers in a cloud environment or are built specifically for a certain cloud platform. So backend developers often deal with cloud and DevOps. Now, let's look at details about databases, ORM systems, MVC frameworks, containers, and operating systems. Now let's talk about databases. I'll make a brief overview of databases in programming, types of databases, tables, collections, relationships between tables or between collections, data rows, data fields, uh, database types, data types, and the SQL language for querying and manipulating data in databases. Database systems, or the so-called DBMS, can be relational or SQL or SQL-based databases and non-relational, non-SQL databases. Relational databases such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle and others hold data in tables and use the SQL language to query and modify data. Non-relational databases such as MongoDB, IndexedDB, Redis and many others hold collections of documents, most often in JSON format, and provide an API and query language to access and modify data. In this section, I will explain the concept of database management systems, DBMS, and I will demonstrate the web as SQL technology, which implements a relational database in modern web browser. Directly in the web browser, you have a relational database and I'll show you in a live demo how to use it. Let's start. Databases hold and manage data in backend systems. Almost all software use a database in some form. The data in database systems is organized in tables or holding rows or collections holding objects or documents key value pairs or other structures the software which manages the retrieves and manipulates the data in a database is called GBMS database management system Examples of DBMS systems are MySQL, MongoDB, Redis, Azure Cosmos DB, PostgreSQL, MS SQL Server, SQLite, Elasticsearch, and thousands more. DBMS systems are responsible for data definition, creating and deleting databases, creating and modifying collections, tables or other sets of data records or documents, and defining their structure fields in data format. Data retrieval, retrieving data, querying data, searching data, filtering data, extracting data, combining data, aggregating data, data manipulation, inserting new data, modifying existing data, deleting existing data, and data administration. Users, roles, and access control, concurrency control, monitoring, replication, backup, and recovery, and others. Modern database systems use a DPMS, modern software systems use a DPMS system to manage data instead of implementing the data management internally. Relational databases organize data in tables and data roles. For example, an e commerce system. Uh, software could have a table holding the products. Each table row could hold product ID, product name, description, vendor, and price. Some tables in the DBMS system maintain relationships between them. For example, one vendor has many related products, and each product has a vendor. 
This is called one-to-many relationship. In relational databases, the SQL language is used to query and modify data. SQL, Structured Query Language, a standard database query and manipulation language. It supports simple and more complex commands such as select name uh, and price from products. The software packages which manage relational databases is called RDBMS, Relational Database Management Systems. Examples of RDBMS systems are MySQL, PostgreSQL, MS SQL Server, uh, Oracle Database, and WebSQL in the HTML5 platform. We shall learn more about databases and SQL in the database modules and courses in the end-to-end -end software engineering training program at SoftUni. NoSQL databases uh, hold collections of documents or key value pairs. Uh, Document databases like MongoDB um, manage collections of documents such as products or vendors where each document has a set of properties like name, price and description. Document databases uh, support uh, retrieving and querying document collections and creating, modifying and deleting documents. Examples of document-based NoSQL databases are MongoDB uh, and IndexedDB in the HTML5 platform. Key value pair databases uh, such as Redis and Amazon DynamoDB store keys mapped to values. These key value pair structures are also known as dictionaries. They support fast search by key operation, but storing corrections of data is less flexible. Key value data storage systems are good for organizing simple data. For example, a phone book can be stored in a key value store. Database systems are important component of most modern software systems, and therefore software engineers must have, must have at least basic database skills. To illustrate the concept of a database systems, we shall take an example. WebSQL is a relational database, RDBMS, uh, embedded in modern web browsers. WebSQL is part of the HTML5 platform which is used to build front-end apps using HTML plus CSS plus JavaScript. It is fully functional RDBMS system, which runs in the client side, in the web browser of internet users. Web front-end developers can use WebSQL to store data in structured format as database tables with relationships. The database is stored in the web browser. Just like cookies and cached images are stored in the laptops and smartphones of internet users. Each web app could create and manipulate a local SQL database. Let's see this live example of web SQL. We open the live demo uh, link uh, https w3schools.com slash SQL. This is a free tutorial for SQL databases uh, available on the internet. We click the Try It Yourself button. It opens a command window uh, where we can type SQL commands and execute they, them. The default command is select asterisk from customers. Let's see. Let's execute it. We press Run SQL button, and the result is a table holding records.
we can modify the SQL query like this. For, for example, select country, comma, city from customers. And we run it. The result consists of the columns country and city from the table customers. We can also display the products table by a similar SQL query. Select asterisk from products. We can recall that in relational databases, data is structured as tables. It holds, uh, click the products. Uh, okay, let's see the tables in our local web SQL database. We press F12 and we click application, the application tab and choose web SQL and open it. We can browse the tables and there data rows. This is an example of relational database tables and relationships between them. Click on the products table. It holds product names, um, also prices and other data about the products. The interesting point here is the supplier ID column. It holds relationships to the supplier table. Let's take the product Tofu. Tofu. One fourteen. It has supplier ID equals to six. Which is this supplier? We can check the table suppliers. It is Mayumi's from Osaka, Japan. I hope you now have an idea what is a database, what is a table and relationship with another table and how data is organized in databases. We shall learn more about databases in the database modules and training courses at SoftUnion. In this section, we will be discussing the object relational mapping technologies or the so-called ORMs. In short, an ORM framework allows persisting objects in a relational database. ORM frameworks work by mapping classes to database tables and providing an API for data query and data manipulation. Let's explain the concepts of ORM in detail and see it in action with a live demo. When we talk about databases, it is important to mention some data access technologies. Data access technologies connect programming languages with database systems. These technologies allow creating databases, defining the data format, storing and manipulating data, and retrieving data using simple or more complex data queries or executing SQL commands. For example, the JDBC um, technology connects Java uh, programs to relational databases such as MySQL and PostgreSQL. RM frameworks, uh, object relational mapping, allows 
persisting objects in relational database. ORM frameworks work by mapping classes to database tables. Instead of executing SQL commands when developers use ORM, they work with simple data classes uh, and API from the ORM framework to handle the CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete, and query the database and execute database relation related operations. This dramatically simplifies the implementation of data access logic in software development. Examples of using ORM systems are when we need to persist JavaScript objects uh, in MySQL database or persist Java objects in PostgreSQL database or persist C-sharp objects in MSQL Server database. These are a uh, few examples of popular ORM frameworks. Uh, Entity Framework, which is the most popular ORM for the C-sharp language and the .NET platform. Hibernate and Java Persistence APA, JPA, uh, which are used as ORM frameworks in Java projects. CQLWise, uh, which is a popular server-side JavaScript ORM framework for persisting JavaScript objects in relational databases. SQL Chemi, uh, which is popular ORM framework for Python. To get a better idea of how ORM frameworks work, I have prepared for you a wife code example. In this example, we use a local web SQL database to hold tasks for a to-do app, to-do list app. We use a simple ORM framework for JavaScript called Chai Data ORM, and we map the database to, Java, to JS objects. Let's see the demo. We open the link at repo.it and we wait for the example to load. It takes some time. Uh, we run the code and see the list of data rows, tasks from our to-do list. Then we can look at the database in the web browser. Uh, we open the result in a new window and we click F12 to show the Chrome Dev Tools and we go to application, then Web SQL, then to do DB database, then the tasks table. We can see the content of the table tasks. It's columns and data rows. Let's look at the source code. It defines an entity class task tasks uh, which describes a task in its fields. This entity corresponds to the rows from the table tasks in the database. The next declaration defines the database with the tasks entity set. The tasks table in the database. Then the database is connected to the local web SQL uh, to the local web SQL uh, data provider in the web browser. Then after connecting a new data row is created and saved to the database. Finally, all tasks are retrieved from the database and printed in the web page.
please do not try to understand all the technical details in the code. Instead, try to understand the main concept of ORM. It maps database rows to objects from a entity class and provides an API for the CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete. The module view controller or MVC pattern consists of three main components, models, which hold data, views, which display the data from the models, and controllers, which handle the interaction with the user, the user actions. In this section, I'll explain why the MVC pattern is so popular at the backend development and why so many web development frameworks like Spring MVC, Django, ASP.NET, MVC, and Laravel use the MVC model to structure the web backend apps. I'll demonstrate the MVC architecture in action through a web demo, a very simple web app written in JavaScript with the MVC pattern. Another important concept from software development is the module view controller MVC pattern. MVC is an architectural pattern for structuring web backend apps by dividing their logic into three separate components, models, views, and controllers. The MVC pattern is illustrated at the diagram which shows the interactions between the MVC components. MVC is complex and some developers need time to understand it. We shall spend significant time, effort and practical work to learn it later at SoftUni. MVC splits the app into controllers, views and models. Users interact with the controllers which modify the data in the model and visualize the data using views. For example, let's take a phone book app. The users see the phone book entries on the screen. They are rendered by a view component. The app model holds the phone book entries. This is the data model behind the views. Controllers are responsible for handling user actions such as view the phone book, search, and add new phone book entry. The controllers, modules, and views are strongly interconnected. But each of them has well-defined responsibility. The idea of MVC is to build a better app structure. which simplifies development and improves maintenance. The presentation logic, which displays elements on the screen is also located in the views. The logic for user interaction, which handles the user input is also located in the controllers. The data models and data related logic are in the models. The MVC app structure 
is very popular popular in web backend frameworks such as ASP.NET MVC, Django and Spring MVC. Variants of MVC sometimes are used in some web uh, front-end frameworks and mobile app frameworks. In the C MVC model, the controllers handle user actions. such as clicking a button or choosing an item from a list. Depending on the user actions, controller may update the app that data data the app data model. Uh, then controllers render a view or the user interface which visualizes the data model. For example, in our phonebook app, the phonebook controller handles the, the actions click at the phonebook entry. The action handler was the data about the selected phonebook entry into a data model object. Uh, then it shows a view which displays this data object. Models hold the app data. Typically, the models are data classes which hold the data that should be displayed on the screen. For example, in our phonebook app, the data model used to visualize a phonebook entry is a data object holding the phonebook entry details. Views display the UI for certain screen from the app based on the data from the model. For example, in our phonebook app, the view which displays the phonebook entries takes as an input a data model holding a list of phonebook entries. The view iterates over uh, the entries one by one and displays them in a table or list. MVC is an important paradigm for structuring web apps and backend developers should learn it. At SoftUni, we teach MVC as part of the server-side web development courses and modules. Web MVC frameworks are software development frameworks which implement the model view controller MVC pattern as foundation to build web apps. Web MVC frameworks such as Spring MVC, Chang'e and ASP.NET are used to build server-side web applications. Under the MVC framework, web apps defined controllers holding actions, views and model components. Actions in the controllers handle the HTTP GET and POSTS request from the client web browser. They perform the requested operations such as retrieving data or adding new data and render a view. To display the result in the client web browser. Controllers implement the operations used to interact with the users. These operations are invoked as HTTP requests by the web browser. For example, clicking a button or submitting a web form executes an HTTP request which is handled by a controller action at the backend. V 
Diffuse render data as HTML plus CSS uh, for displaying in the quantum web browsers. Views are called by the controller actions to render the UI. They take as input a data model and visualize the data from the model as HTML. The rendered HTML is returned as HTTP response to the web browser. For example, a view can render a list of items as HTML. Models hold the app data. Which is prepared by controllers to be rendered in the views. In most cases, models are simple data objects or collections of objects. When a controller wants to return data for displaying in the client web browser, it was the data from the database, put it in a data model object and send it to the view which renders it as HTML. Examples of popular backend web MVC frameworks are the following ASP.NET MVC for C Sharp developers, Spring MVC for Java developers, Express.js for server side JavaScript developers, Django for Python web developers, Laravel for PHP web developers, Ruby on Rails for Ruby developers, Revel for Go developers, and many others. Almost all server-side web, web development is driven by MVC frameworks. So you need to learn at least one of them if you want to be a back-end developer. We shall learn MVC frameworks at SoftUni at the end of our end-to-end -end training program for software engineers. To illustrate how MVC frameworks work in action, I have prepared a live code example project. This is a simple Web MVC web app which holds a registry of students. The app is written in JavaScript using Node.js. It uses Express as a server side MVC framework and Puck as templating engine to implement views. The app is structured as classical MVC application consisting of controllers, views, and models. Let's first see it in action. We open the link to repo it and wait for code to load. We run the app and we see the home page. We open the app in, in a new browser window. 
And this is because we want to see the URLs of the pages better. The app has three tabs, home, view students and add student. At the home page, we see the number of students. The URL of the home page is the URL of the app. At the view students uh, page, we see a list of registered users. The URL of this page is slash students. At the add students page, we see a web form for registering a new student. The URL of this page is slash add student. Let's add a student, for example, Peter with Peter at with email peter at gmail.com. After clicking the add button, the new student is added to the registry and the browser is redirected to view students page. This is all the functionality we have at this app, in this app. Now let's look at the code. Uh, it is complex, don't try to understand it, just get an idea of controllers, models and views. We open the controllers folder and the students-controller.js This controller defines four actions bound to the following HTTP endpoints. Get slash. This action retrieves the home page. It creates a data model, simple JavaScript objects, and puts some data in it for visualization. Then it renders the view with the name home, which should visualize the data from the model. Get slash students. This action was the student data and renders it through the view students. get slash add student renders the add student HTML form. And post slash add dash student Adds the received from the HTTP request new student to the student's collections and redirects to the student's page. Let's see how models look like. The student's model is loaded from a JSON file. Uh, the JSON file holds three students with their names and emails. Let's look at the views. Home.puck is very simple. It just prints the registered users. They are count. Header.pug. It holds the top navigation. 
it is included at the start of all other views. Students.puck It holds the top navigation. Uh, it iterates over the students and prints their names and email in a list. Add student dot puck. It displays a form to enter the student's name and email with a submit button. Don't try to understand the code with all its technical details. Try to understand the MVC pattern, the concept of structuring web apps as controllers, views, and models. MVC is an important development concept and web developers should understand it. We shall learn MVC with a lot of practical examples and projects in the web development module at Softuni. In this section, I will explain the concept of API, Application Programming Interface. What is a web service and how web services provide an API to remote clients over the network through standard protocols and data formats such as HTTP, REST, GraphQL, gRPC, SOAP, JSON, BSON, XML, YAML, and others. So what's an API? API means Application Programming Interface. This is a way to connect uh, two programming components or two programs. So, programming interfaces are designed for communication between system components. For example, you may have a printer and you want to tell it to print something, so you use the printer app API, for example, something like, please open the first printer, please load paper, please print this text, please uh, change the font, please print another text, and finally, uh, please stop printing and uh, get the paper out of uh, eject the paper from the printer. So an API is a set of functions, set of functionality and some specification that software programs follow and components also follow to talk to each other. This includes some data structures uh, which are uh, exchanged between the components, uh, some classes, some functions with certain parameters, their meanings, etc, etc, etc. So an, an example uh, of API is the JDBC, Java Database Connectivity. JDBC is a Java API standard uh, for Java, designed for Java apps to talk to, with database servers. For example, with the JDBC, you can connect to a certain server using uh, a driver and some connection string, some uh, IP address of the server, some username, passwords, etc. You can uh, execute an SQL uh, query, for example, and you can retrieve the returned uh, set of rows and iterate over these rows one by one. So JDBC is an example of API. Another API is the Windows API. It's a family of APIs which are used for Windows apps to talk with the Windows operating system. For example, using the Windows API, you can uh, print uh, text to, to the printer or attach to your Windows operating system, or you can uh, create uh, a 3D game uh, targeting the OpenGL uh, and DirectX uh, APIs in Windows, or you can create, uh, for example, U UI um, user interface for your app, for example, forms, buttons, uh, buttons, and many other text boxes and many others. 
Uh, another example is the Web Audio API. This is a JavaScript API running in your browser, which allows playing audio in the web browser with JavaScript. For example, you can tell the web uh, through the Web Audio API, please open this MP3 uh, audio file. Please now start playing. After two seconds, please stop or please go to second 25. Start playing, uh, increase the volume, decrease the volume, in and many others. So this is the concept of API. This is a ready to use software which provides a way to be uh, inserted or used by another program component or another software uh, through some standard interface. This standard interface is called API. So what is a web service? Web services implement communication between software systems or components over the network. So APIs can be local. For example, uh, you have a desktop app which uses the uh, Windows API to draw its user interface. But a web service is a remote API. For example, your mobile phone uh, connects to the Facebook API to display your new chat messages in your uh, Facebook chat, chat app. So web services use standard protocols such as HTTP, JSON, XML, and many others. They are based on the request response model, which means that the client, for example, your mobile or web app, sends a request, something like, please give me the chat messages from the server. And the web service responds uh, with uh, some message and says, these are your chat messages, for example. And this communication is typically done uh, through the HTTP interface which is natively supported in web browsers. And the response is typically a JSON object, which means a JavaScript object, which means uh, objects holding other objects and some fields and data. It's uh, more simple than XML, which is stack based and JSON is simplified. So exchanging messages, holding data and operations is the main form of communication between the client and web service. Clients are consumers for the web services. Web services are backend apps. They are usually running in a cloud environment or in, a, in some backend server on a web server typically. And clients uh, use the web service, call it, and the web service provides something for the client and clients typically draw the user interface and draw the data taken from the web service. So uh, in modern internet apps, your data stays in the cloud or in the server. Right? It is accessed by web services and it is, uh, and your user interface stays in your hands, in your mobile phone or web app. So what's the relation between web services and API? Web services expose backend APIs over the network. They may use different protocols and data formats, protocols such as HTTP, REST, GraphQL, gRPC, SOAP, and JSON RPC and others, and data formats such as JSON, BSON, XML, YAML, and others. So we need protocols in order to specify how uh, we request something from the server and how the server responds to these requests. And it works differently with GraphQL, uh, with JRPC, uh, and uh, JRPC, and with HTTP. And the data format can be binary, like PSON, uh, binary uh, serialized object not notation, or JavaScript, uh, JSON, which is text-based. XML is also text-based format, more human readable, and YAML is a short version of XML, uh, which uses less uh, tax. So web services are hosted on a web server, also called a, an HTTP server. For example, it could be Apache web server or JPOS application server in Java, or it might be uh, ASP.NET uh, web server. 
So web services provide set of functions which are invocable, invocable from the web. It's also called web API, web-based API, remotely uh, invocable API. Web services are set of functions which can be invoked remotely. For example, uh, you have a function to log in and you provide the username and password. If you log in correctly, the server returns you an authentication token. Later, you can get your chat messages with another function uh, where you send your authentication token and the server returns back a JSON object uh, holding your chat messages. So RESTful APIs is the most popular web service standard but there are many others. For example, high-performance apps usually use uh, binary standards like uh, uh, gRPC and BSON. Uh, and the classical RESTful APIs use uh, JSON and HTTP and REST. So we'll learn in over our course of study at SoftUni um, many of these standards and how to use them with, with code examples and projects. But for now, you should know that there are protocols and data formats which allow web services to talk with client apps. For example, your Facebook app to talk with the Facebook server uh, using the GraphQL um, protocol. RESTful APIs is the most popular web service technology or web service standard, but it's not the only standard. Example of web service to get a better idea of what is it is uh, this one, api.zipoputamus slash us slash some code. So it, uh, what it does is that you give a country code and also a zip code and it returns a JSON object holding inf some information about this place. For example, Beverly Hills has this zip code. Uh, if we use different uh, zip code, we'll have another place which has different uh, location and uh, some other data. This is an example of HTTP GET request, uh, which returns a JSON. This is a very simple RESTful web service, but this api.zipoputamus runs in some backend web server uh, at some cloud environment, maybe Amazon or Azure, I'm not sure, and it responds to your API calls. If I call uh, this and if I change something, for example, uh, this one, it will respond uh, with some data uh, retreat from their database. So that's all I want to tell you about web services and APIs. We'll learn more uh, when you start uh, learning programming in, in depth and you'll have a lot of exercises, lessons, etc., etc., etc. In this section, I'll explain the concepts of REST and RESTful services, which expose programming logic to remote clients over the HTTP protocol using standard HTTP requests such as CAT, POST, PATCH, PUT, and DELETE. So REST and RESTful services are a way to implement a web API using the concept of REST, repre representational state transfer. REST is an architecture for client server communication, uh, which is based over the HTTP protocol, the main protocol which serves the in internet. And it is based on resources, which may have representations and uh, you can manage or process these resources through HTTP actions, such as, for example, get, please retrieve this object, or uh, post, please create a new object, or delete, please, please delete an existing object. 
So resources have URI or address, like the URL uh, address in your address bar when you open a website uh, in the web browser. And uh, resources can be created, retrieved, modified, deleted, etc. So what is a resource? For example, a blog post. If we have a blog, we have many posts and we can retrieve these posts. We can create a new post, we can publish a new post in the blog, etc, etc, etc. So we can create a new resource, we can retrieve existing resources, we can search for existing resources by some filter, for example. Um, we can modify existing resource or we can replace an existing uh, resource with another or we can delete uh, existing resource, etc, etc, etc. So RESTful API or RESTful service, which is nearly the same, provides access to server-side resources via HTTP protocol and the REST communication style. So RESTful API means HTTP-based uh, set of um, some functions which can be uh, invoked remotely using standard protocol uh, and more, more precisely HTTP. So RESTful APIs uh, are based on the HTTP protocols. So they provide server-side functionality to remote clients, clients based on the HTTP requests and HTTP responses. And RESTful APIs are web services invoked through the HTTP protocol and a web service, as I explained, is a remote functionality that can be evolved over the internet. And they are based on the request response model, which means that uh, users request something. For example, it says, please give me all the users in your block system, for example, and the server responds with uh, some HTTP response where we have response code, response headers and response body and uh, the client draws this response in the user. So client is the front end, for example, mobile app or uh, web app and the server is back end. It is uh, some functionality running in the cloud. So RESTful APIs are services uh, which uh, use the standard methods cat, post, patch, uh, put, delete to implement the so-called CRUD operation. Create, read, update, delete. This is called CRUD. So we can retrieve data with cat, we can create a new data with post, you can modify existing data with patch, and we can delete data with delete, or we can use put to replace an existing data with another uh, data. So this is an example, for example, if we have a block uh, system, we have a block where we can get all posts. So we'll have some uh, server, for example, myblock.com uh, slash API or some other folder and posts, which means please give me all the posts, all posts in the block, all the publications in the block. And I can retrieve a specific publication, for example, publication with ID 17. Uh, I can create a new post invoking a post and sending some data into API slash posts. Uh, I can delete existing posts like this and I can replace uh, using put operation or uh, patch operation to modify existing post and I specify the post ID and the data which should be changed. Let me illustrate this through the GitHub RESTful API. You know GitHub is the largest uh, uh, place where you developers hold their projects and repositories and they have a RESTful API, API which is based on HTTP and REST and I'll show you how we can view issues, create a new issue and some other operation using Postman through the GitHub Issues API. So first what is Postman? Postman is an app 
which allows us to send HTTP requests and retrieve the returned results. So this is the Postman and I can I have some uh, Postman collections here. I'll close all the tabs and uh, I have this. Please make a get to API github.com. This is the server which provides the API for GitHub. Slash repos. This is the user from GitHub and this is the repo from GitHub slash issues. Uh, in fact, I will use this repo from GitHub, GitHub test knockoff, etc, etc, etc. And I have some issues here. Uh, okay. And I want to take the issues to retrieve the issues. This will retrieve the latest, uh, maybe 20 or so, uh, like this issue 3073, which is found a bug. Uh, it is reported by chaser09. Uh, we can find it. This is this uh, issue, chaser0. Do you see what's the idea? The idea is that you request and you say, please give me all the issues from this repository. And the server responds with all these issues with very uh, comprehensive information about them. For example, uh, commands, for example, uh, title, number, tax, etc, etc, etc. Everything which is displayed here is found in the, in the response. For example, the date of the issue, the user who created the issue, etc. So we can, this takes all the issues or by default there is a paging because if the issues are 5 million, this will hack, it will need too much time to execute and to transfer the data. Uh, but we can request a specific issue like this one. We can get issues slash one, which means give me the issue number one. And the issue number one is test creation created by user test map. Uh, so I can open this issue and just change this to one. So this is the test creation issue. And it says something like this will be deleted in next step, etc, etc, etc. I'm not sure whether the comments are here, but definitely the, we have some reactions here, which we can request. Uh, we may have, uh, for example, some tax like uh, this uh, importance medium type api bug etc 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 and we may have some subscriptions some followers for the user and i'm not sure how to retrieve the commands uh, but i'll try slash commands yes these are the commands for example Yes, this is the first issue at this repo, which is something, this one, okay? It is posted at certain date, etc., etc., etc. So you can create a browser similar to this one, where you can open the issues uh, through this. I'll show you some more. Uh, if I try to uh, get an invalid issue, for example, this one, it will the server will respond with 404 not found it tells me this resource is not found i can create an issue how do i create an issue i post to this url this body so i say new issue i'm having problems with this new issue for example from nakov send and now if I refresh, I have created this one. And it's created with some labels and with some body. I'm having problem with this. You can do everything from this API. And this is the concept. You can uh, try to create uh, issue with invalid data. It will, you'll get an error, for example, unprocessable entity. 
and you can edit an existing issue. For example, 1119, 1119, okay? This is minor bug, but I can change this and it will be edited bug. So, it should be now, I'm not sure why did, this didn't happen. It says, uh, edited book, 1119, 1119, control F5. I'm not sure what happened, but basically this patch request uh, should fix this edited bug. It should change this issue. Something happened. I uh, edited changes this title to edited bug, but maybe it, it returns bugs by, by some reason. I'm not sure why this happens. And I can close an issue. For example, uh, it's open and I can just close it. For example, this issue 6 uh, will now be closed. 6 is closed. And also I can get labels, etc, etc, etc. I will not go further, but you can get the idea. Using such cat, post, delete, patch and other requests, you can, through the web, RESTful web services, uh, access and modify remote data. So this is how, for example, if you have a mobile app, uh, you can store your data at the server side in a cloud environment and your app will uh, just dis retrieve and display the data and it will keep the data in the cloud and this data will be shared so it can be um, displayed by many users on their mobile phones. In this section, I will explain the concepts of virtualization, virtual machines, virtual storage, virtual networking, and other virtualization technologies. I'll continue with the basic concepts and models in cloud technologies and the different cloud computing models, infrastructure as a service, IaaS, platform as a service, PaaS, and software as a service, SaaS. After that, I will explain and demonstrate the technology of software containers, which are basically, basically a lightweight virtual machines holding pre-installed software and they require less resources to run than a classical virtual machine. I'll demonstrate in a live demo how to use Docker, the leading containerization platform, how to download and run container images from Docker Hub, the public repository of Docker images, how to start, stop, and manage Docker containers in your Docker engine, and how to play with the Docker online play playground. You have a live demo. Virtualization, cloud environments and containers are important infrastructural components in modern software development. Virtualization is the concept and technology of running a virtual machine, VM, or virtual environment inside a physical hardware system. Simply said, this is a virtual computer running inside a physical computer. In a single physical machine called host, several virtual machines can run simultaneously. For example, in a Windows desktop host, we can run simultaneously an Android virtual machine plus two an Ubuntu Linux virtual machines plus a FreeBSD virtual machine. Storage, memory, networking and desktops can also be virtual. Virtual storage um, means that you can use remote or virtual storage infrastructure to appear and function exactly like a local hard drive. Example of virtual storage is the desktop Google Drive client, which displays your files from the drive as local files, files on your computer. 
Virtual memory is a technology where external or remote memory resources can be used as local memory. For example, a USB flash memory can be used as a disk cache in, window, in Microsoft Windows in an effort to increase computing performance. Virtual networking um, in virtual network infrastructure to be uh, distributed over internet without uh, using a physical network equipment. Virtual desktops are virtual desktop environments running in a virtual machines available remotely. For example, um, developers may use virtual Safari web browser on macOS for testing a frontend app. Virtualization is a powerful concept and technology in software development and developers should be familiar with it. The concept of cloud environment, cloud infrastructure or just cloud uh, plays an important role in modern computer. The cloud consists of remote computing resources, virtual machines, storage, platforms and software instances available on demand. The cloud infrastructure, platform, services and cloud-based software is typically available for a rent for a fee. Some vendors uh, provide free of charge limited versions of their cloud environments. The cloud environments are offered in several service models. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Infrastructure as a service, IS, uh, provides virtual machines uh, and other computing resources on demand for a fee. Examples of IS model is when a company hires virtual servers to host their websites or virtual machines to deploy their apps. Under the IS model, uh, developers and system administrators install, manage and maintain their virtual machines, the operating systems, configuration settings, backup, security and everything else. IS services are offered by, by the major cloud infrastructure providers such as Amazon, AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, DigitalOcean, and Trackspace. The IaaS model is mostly for system administrators and developers who want to completely control their production environments. PaaS, Platform as a Service, provides managed environments for app deployment. Managed means that someone else cares about the hardware software and its maintenance and guarantees that the requested environment and services are constantly up and running. Developers don't care about the execution environment only for their apps. For example, you have a Python app and you want to host it in the cloud. Instead of renting a cloud server, you could deploy and run the app in the Heroku Pass or in Azure Pass. The PaaS model uh, provides cloud environment pro for deploying and running apps where developers do not care about the operating system, software platforms, application servers, database servers, and other details. Developers just send their source code or compiled app to the cloud, configure some settings, and the app is live and running. PaaS platforms uh, typically provide a lot of managed platform services. Uh, such as databases, relational and document-based storage services, video, files, content delivery networks and others, message queue services, logging services, caching services, machine learning and artificial intelligence services. 
Developers use PaaS to simplify the development, deployment, and maintenance of their apps and software systems. The PaaS model uh, is mostly for developers who want to focus on the software rather than on the environment that hosts it. SaaS Software as a Service provides managed software instances in the cloud. Users pay for hosted software in the cloud or get a limited version for free or use it and use it over internet. Examples of SaaS services are the Office 365 application suite, Google Docs and WordPress.com website hosting cloud. The SaaS model is mostly for end users, not for developers. Containers, Tokyo and other containerization platforms uh, like Linux containers provide popular infrastructural concept and technology to deploy, run and manage software installations and software environments packaged as container images. A container image is a standalone executable software package uh, bundled together with its dependencies, operating system, code, runtime, environments and others, and designed to run in a virtual execution environment like Docker. Container images are sets of files and folders, packets as zip, uh, tar or other archive format. When you run a container image, it creates and runs a container. A virtual app called container. Thus, a container is ultimately just a running container image in the host environment. Containers bundle their own software, code, libraries, and configuration files. Containers are isolated from one another. but can communicate with each other other through well-defined channels. The container host could start, stop, pause and resume the containers. A container typically holds an app together with its runtime environment, the operating system, the app runtime, Uh, such as Node.js or Apache plus PHP, the app code uh, or its compiled binaries such as the WordPress source code in PHP, the app dependencies uh, such as libraries, frameworks and configuration settings like curl, OpenSSL and Zilip. For example, a WordPress instance can run in a container which runs uh, Linux plus Apache web server plus uh, PHP plus some libraries uh, and holds the WordPress source code with some configuration files. All these components are bundled together in a and run as a single application in an isolated environment. The benefits of the containerization technology are simplified installation, uh, configuration and deployment. Containers allow automated configuration and management of virtual software environments using tools like Kubernetes, Containerization is often associated with DevOps. 
DevOps combines agile principles and technologies to implement continuous delivery, build automation, continuous integration, automated deployment, automated testing, automated releasing, and automatic monitoring of the software systems in the software development process. DevOps engineers often use containers to implement automated provisioning of uh, development, testing, and production environments. Docker is the most popular containerization platform. It runs as a service on Linux, Windows, and many other cloud environments. Once you run Docker, you can create container images, user Docker file scripts. Docker uh, runs containers from local images or images downloaded from the Docker Hub online repository or from images created by Docker file scripts. Docker containers are virtual app instances uh, which can be started, stopped or put at pause. Developers can connect to existing Docker containers and manage them from the console. Docker containers can expose network ports like HTTP port uh, 80 to the host environment. These containers can serve internet traffic from their host machine. Docker is open source software. It runs on Linux, Windows, Mac and Mac. Docker images can run in many cloud environments such as Amazon Elastic Container Service and Docker for Asia. Docker Compose is another uh, container-based technology for defining and running multi-container Docker apps. For example, using Docker Compose, developers can load WordPress plus MySQL in two separate containers with an integration between them so that the WordPress instance stores its data in the MySQL database. Let's play a bit with Docker to demonstrate its power. Uh, you can install Docker on your local machine uh, and run some Docker image. Alternatively, you can use Docker online the Docker Online Playground from HTTPS WAPS dot play with Docker dot com. It requires a free Docker Hub registration. Uh, let's open the Docker Playground from the buff link. Let's play a bit with Docker to demonstrate uh, its power. You can install Docker on your local computer and run some Docker image. Alternatively, you can use the Docker Online Playground from HTTPS, uh, wabs.playwithdocker.com with a free, it requires a free Docker Hub registration. Let's open the Docker background, uh, playground from the buff link. Now, uh, create a new Docker instance and we shall see the Docker console. We can type commands here. Uh, for example, we can type docker uh, hyphen v. It shows the Docker version. Uh, let's run uh, a container, the following command. The following command uh, downloads a Docker image and turns it in a new container. Uh, docker run hyphen d 
pi from p column 80 80 column 80 docker samples slash static hyphen site we run the buff command and we wait for its execution it takes uh, some time to download the images and their dependencies the image name is docker sample slash static site Uh, this image will be downloaded from internet from the docker hub image repository the above command also maps the port 80 from the container to port 8080 at the host This way, the web server running in the container will be visible from the host machine and from internet. The hyphen D uh, option runs the container in background instead of launching its console. Now the container is up and running. On the local machine, we can open the exposed URL, HTTP localhost, column 88. In the Docker playground, uh, we uh, the port 8080 is mapped uh, from the docker host uh, is mapped to automatically created url we can open the 8080 link and we can see we shall access the app from the container this page is served by the web server uh, running inside the, the docker container. We can view the currently running docker images, docker containers by the following common docker ps. It lists all containers along with some details about them. Now let's run a second container in parallel. We shall use a similar command docker run hyphen d hyphen uh, p8081 com80 docker sample slash static site. Um, we run the same container, but we expose its port 80 to different port on the host machine. We can now have two containers running simultaneously on the host machine. We now we can open. Uh, the apps from these two containers from their exposed ports. Let's now log in into the first container docker exec hyphen it container name proxy your name bash this command executes in the specified container the bash shell in interactive or command line mode the login is successful and we can type commands uh, inside the container let's list the local files in the container ls hyphen ll AL. View the content of the main web page served by the Nginx web server in uh, the container cat index.html.
Exit from the container's interactive shell. We can stop certain container by the command docker kill plus the process ID or name. We can use the tab key to autocomplete the container name. Now the container is terminated and the exposed uh, websites are no longer well, website is no longer available. This. Note that this is normal if you don't understand everything about containers in Docker. Uh, the idea of this demonstration is to understand the concept of containers as a tool to run prepackaged apps and software environments. Containerization is an important concept in software infrastructure and developers should be familiar with it. I already made a live coding demonstration about containers and Docker. Uh, you can also experiment with Docker at the Docker Playground from the above link. Try yourself and have fun. Did you like this lesson? Do you want more? Join the learners community at softunit.org. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more free video tutorials on coding, dev concepts and software development. Get access to more free dev lessons and learning resources for developers. Get free help from mentors and meet other learners. And it's all free, so join now, softuni.org. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Check out my other videos from the Dev Concepts series where I explain and demonstrate many concepts and technologies from the software development profession. You may find video lessons about front-end, back-end, object-oriented and functional programming, software engineering, software testing and many other topics. Type in the comments below what topics you want me to explain in this video series. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay in touch when I publish something new. Goodbye!